Hi, <laughs> welcome to a Curated Life podcast. I'm Katarina. And I'm Tori. Hi. And she was just <laughs> complaining about the way that she looks. And if you're watching this on YouTube, Tori looks cute, as she always does. She's like, I don't look good today. Like, what are you talking about? It's, honestly, it's the video thing that makes this hard. It's not the talking. Oh, I know. The fact that it's a podcast, it's the, it's the video. <laughs> Tori's adorable every single day. She never doesn't wear makeup. Her hair's always cute, even when she's like, I haven't washed yeah, it in seven days or whatever. <laughs> like, it still looks, she looks good. I don't know what you're Anyways, what we're going to talk about today, Kat, is <laughs> we're going to talk about romanticizing your life why it's important, how to romanticize it, ways we found to romanticize our life, the difference it's made, all of that good stuff. And I feel like this is a term that you see more and more recently. Yeah, it's like the Instagram, like, now it's like, uh -huh, or something. It's like, now, yeah, now it's, it's like a trend. Thing. Yeah. But I do believe in it, and I yeah. do think that it kind of has the power to change the way that you see your life yeah and also help your attitude a lot and can also be a good way of coping with negative feelings that you might have in ways that aren't like um you know substance abuse <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that's just still throwing that one out there um and yeah i feel like the like both of us have done this before it was substance like abuse no, no. I'm just, kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding um i mean yeah no i can definitely drink copious amounts of alcohol to try and <laughs> yeah. cope with my I life i mean yeah same but um no i do think we have been we've done it even when we didn't know that's what yeah. we were yeah. doing yeah and i think that it can be really easy in life to start focusing too much on the things that haven't happened, the things that need to happen, the things that aren't complete, like in our homes, mm -hmm. in our work, in our wardrobes, whatever it is, like yeah. what's missing, what's not correct, what's not full yet. And when you romanticize pieces of your life, it takes everything around you and kind of like puts these rose colored glasses on mm -hmm. so that you can see the beauty and every little thing around you. Yeah. So do you want to start with giving some examples of how you romanticize your life personally? Or do you want me to? Yeah, you go ahead. Okay, I'll first. start. I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> so my life is very complicated. It can be very difficult. And I have three children and they, yell at me a lot <laughs> and because they're girls and I try and really hone in on the moments when they're not yelling at me <laughs> and kind of like emotionally check out when they are yelling at me now I try to like connect with them when they're having a tantrum I definitely do like the gentle parenting like maintain connection with your child but I try not to get emotionally invested and in when they're having a hard time. Yeah. yeah, you're really good at that. I have to try because uh -huh. they will take you on a journey oh, where yeah. you don't want to go. <laughs> so when they're being really mean or yelling or whatever, I just try to not be emotionally tied to that moment. But then when they are in a good place and they're running around and they're happy or lovey or whatever it is, just like focusing on that and like taking a picture in my mind's eye and being like that is magical and that's yeah. what I'm gonna think about 30 years from now when they're mm -hmm. huge and hold on to it mm -hmm. it's just like yeah so I try and like latch on to those moments where they're like running around in the yard and they're like crazy hair is flying yeah, all over the place sweet. so part of romanticizing my life for me I think is focusing on those kinds of moments it's funny because like what the other day we were talking about this and you were like there's beauty in every day like every day had and like you said that and I was like yeah no it really is even like, the hard even days. the hard days there's just there's one little moment that like 
that could be great yeah. that you gotta yeah. hone in on. Like, if both my kids are having a hard day, like, heaven help you. Yeah. Because they're gonna be <laughs> screaming and crying all day long. Yeah. But there's still, there's gonna be a there's, moment yeah. in there yeah. where it's sweet, where it's loving, and you have to latch on to that yeah. so that you can look back at the day and be like, even though there was a lot of hardship today, there was a lot of beauty and it was good. Mm -hmm. Like yesterday was rough. And like at the end of it, you were like, it I was like, was this good. is a good day. It was good. Tori was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I was like, uh, today was not as good as Tori's other like, days. So like both <laughs> Kyla and Demi each separately oh, had level rough. 10 meltdowns and i said that one was like level 10 i was like, was which, like one? which one which one i felt like they both <laughs> the one from earlier or the one that more recently happened because yeah she's like no but they were there wrong. was moments in that day that it was just really really beautiful sweet and sweet and, yeah so like yeah. outside of the meltdowns mm -hmm. they had these moments where like they were keeping me company while i was like doing stuff in the yard mm -hmm. or like they were playing with the hose or in the pool or whatever and like, I think I've, I've gotten to a place where I'm a lot better at latching on to those. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, I'm like, that was really good. Yeah, and you're like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I it. but yeah, yesterday was raw. <laughs> and I just didn't see it that way. I did feel that way a little bit at the end of the day, Demi had a hard time going to bed. Oh, yeah. And that's when my attitude starts to slip yeah. is when it's getting late and I'm tired mm -hmm. and then she's being difficult and I'm like, Mm -hmm. that's enough from okay. you <laughs> we did this all day and i had a good attitude you gotta yeah. pull it together yeah. that's probably where i start to slip because it's mm -hmm. the end of the day and i'm really tired yeah for me i think i also like not little moments that i also romanticize but it's like just beauty like i'm such a and i hate to say that but i i feel like i am i'm very materialistic about like just Things. You appreciate beautiful like things. Like, I walked in the other day, and she had, like, these flowers, these t white tulips sitting on her table. And I was, like, in the morning light was coming in. And, like, it was, like, before you had gotten up. It was and, quiet. Like, it was quiet. <laughs> and it was just, like, the way to start that morning, I was, like, oh, like, it's going to be good and beautiful. But it's, like, I do that, like, all day long at, like, with people, with things, with, like, with everything. Well, that brings up a really important point of putting effort behind which you do it more naturally than yeah. most people do you don't have to try as hard mm -hmm. but like some of us have to try to notice when something is beautiful right. like the way the sunlight hits something or the birds playing out there or the wind blowing across mm -hmm. the yard whatever it is or like you said like you walked into my house and said to me like oh I'm at work yeah like it's like the morning I was like and like the morning was like hectic it always is because I'm always running Tori's late. not a morning and then I got so. in and it was just like I mean everything else here was just still and calm and, and it pretty. was just yeah I was like okay that's beautiful <laughs> like okay that's a good start to the day <laughs> yeah. but I do that a lot with like literally everything in my life and it was, yeah, I was like, I've been romanticizing things ever before it was even cool. And when it was <laughs> before rom I knew that romanticized. That's what was happen happening. <laughs> yeah. And but I do that important. with like watching you, the little moments that you have with your girls. Like I'm sitting in a chair <laughs> rocking another baby or like doing something else and looking at that moment and knowing like you're like filming that in your mind. Yeah. And I do that with you just even from afar, like with your girls. That's sweet. That's sweet. And, and you do that too with others. Oh, like absolutely. With me. Like that when Demi came with the little book. Like oh I will gosh. hold on to that for my the whole other day, life. Demi got a book and asked Tori to read it to her and yeah. wanted to sit in her lap. Which doesn't happen. <laughs> Demi's in a phase. Yeah, Kyla still <laughs> loves being sweet and it's great. But Demi struggles a with little that. bit with anybody else besides mom. Yeah, pretty much. Or dad yeah. right now. Yeah, mom and dad. Which that's a newer development of like him also being a favorite right but everyone else is but, dead yeah, to her it's those little moments that makes it that it's you like it's okay you can be mean to me for the rest of the week now <laughs> i'm good these little there's this video that i said tori and some other people are like <laughs> so talking funny. about toddlers being dopamine drug lords because they they can be so mean to you and then they do one little sweet thing and you're like oh 
Yeah. It's like an abusive relationship. It is. It's toxic. Really. <laughs> it's very toxic. But we love it. Yeah. I'm so hooked on it. You're like good for the rest of the week. It's like you can be horrible to me. <laughs> Just one sweet thing. I'm good for the day. Yeah. So there's that. And then there's also, so something for me, we kind of, we were talking about it yesterday, baking or cooking. Uh-huh can be a way of romanticizing things. So like when life is really hectic and busy and crazy, whatever. And this is something that my dad has done forever and he works a ton. Mm -hmm. But taking the time to cook yourself like a real meal, like good, which is why my sandwiches are always oh, yeah. top notch. My favorite. Cause I'm gonna tell you, Tori loves when I make a sandwich. She's like, you want a sandwich? Absolutely. Yes, I know I, it worked for you, but absolutely. Yes, I do. <laughs> but I think it's because I, when I'm making food, I'm gonna take the time to add the extra ingredients that mm -hmm. take it up a notch. And it's more work, but it's in the act of making food, it's a little relaxing. It's like a way to disconnect from the rest of right. your day. And then also, it makes the food so delicious. Mm -hmm. And really like life has very, like there's pleasure in good company, in sex, in drink and in food. And that's kind of it. Yeah, it really is. So like if you're not trying to make the most out of your meals, I'm not saying you could do that all the time. Like right. I joke constantly that I'm on a starvation diet because my kids, don't necessarily they don't let me eat properly but when i get a second <laughs> when i have a minute you go I, all out i do like make do. something good and it's important like i just had a salad i was starving and like not that the salad was anything special but like i cut up avocado and mm -hmm. put some bacon on it and this you know the whole thing but i think cooking meals that are really delicious and like finding little things to add to your food so like if you're gonna make pasta something that I've done before is I like certain brands of veggie pasta I think are really good but instead of just doing like pasta and sauce and like cheddar cheese or whatever mixing in um maybe a goat cheese or like a different kind of cheese right. a fancy one a fancy cheese <laughs> a fancy cheese but cooking something and like really putting some effort behind it mm -hmm. makes a difference. Yeah, no, it does for sure. Yeah, I agree. Although Tori does not cook a whole lot. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, Daryl's gonna have to step it up. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's I'll Darryl's enjoy job. it. <laughs> She's enjoying the cooking. Oh, yeah. Or like once, a, if I'm here by myself mm -hmm. and the big kids are not here and the baby's sleeping and I make a meal, I like to sit at my table. I might even like light the candle that it, that's yeah. at the table and make it a nice dinner that even if it's just for me, mm -hmm. it's enjoyable. And then I think also that kind of brings us to your surroundings and your home and making your home a pleasant place. Yeah. See, I'm good at that. That's Tori where I was going excels with that. in yeah. that area. Like I, I want my bed made every day. Mm -hmm. Like I get up in the morning and make my bed every day. Cause I like to, and like Daryl and other people like don't get that. They don't understand that. And it's just like, that's something that I like romanticize, I guess. Mm -hmm. And enjoy having your bedroom, yeah. your space. Everything like put away. I like my pillows on back on my couch every night. Mm -hmm. Like the blanket draped over, like that's important to me. Cause then in the morning I wake up and the sun's shining in and it's beautiful. And it's like that little moment that I have before, like I'm running late and then I'm like running around and freaking <laughs> out and screaming at the dog and yeah. Every day. Every, every day, every day, so. But in some places where you live are easier to do that with than others. Right. Like if you build a brand new house and you picked out all the finishes, it's gonna be easier yeah. to, for that to feel like a beautiful yeah. space. You can barely put any furniture in a house like that and you're gonna enjoy the way that it feels and looks. In some places you have to get a little bit more creative. Mm -hmm like embrace the funkiness of yeah. it I feel like which I've to, had to do that a lot mm -hmm. with renting until it. like yeah this house mm -hmm. and even like in this house the house that you live in now is a wonderful house but it's not like you got to pick out all your finishes right. so yeah even then 
it wasn't like you moved into a house that looked exactly like what you yeah i mean obviously there's always going to be things you know you would change or Mm -hmm. want to fix or no house is perfect yeah but yeah for sure and i feel like my sister amanda has done a really good job of that because a lot of her housing has been like military housing i don't know if you've seen military housing it's not (laughs) cute yeah and she does such a good job she really i mean she really does and she picks a lot of like beautiful wood pieces and like light furniture light things she keeps it like very light very simple and it feels like so good and the houses are always like crazy outdated yeah not they're just so not cute but it really showed me like your house can be straight out of the 80s yeah. with no updates and still feel like a pleasant beautiful environment when you don't let that like dampen your efforts yeah. to make it feel good and like keep it clean and kind of arrange it in a way that feels homey you- and like for me I mean I up and yeah until you know, this past year we've rented and like I've lived in an apartment and they're all cookie cutter. They're all mm-hmm. the same. And I wanted to like make mine like represent me and personalize it. So you have to like, like for me, I had to make it more unique to me. And like mm-hmm. Amanda like makes it like all of her stuff can look and feel the same. Each house that she goes to can mm-hmm. feel like a little piece of home for her. But And then for me, I did get to build a house a number of years ago, mm-hmm. and it was beautiful and wonderful. And then I sold it for money. Yeah, <laughs> and then I was homeless for a minute, and then I have lived in two colonials back to back and had a secondary home that was a condo. But I did renovate those houses, and not, not everybody can do that, but I will say if you do take your money and you save it up and you put it into certain projects if you do buy an outdated house there are certain things in your house that you're gaining equity if you put money into it right but then it's also going to be something that you enjoy while you're there and I can't tell you how many times and like I'm so guilty of this you wait until you're gonna sell your house to finish it yeah you're you are guilty of this until this until house. this house yeah and I tell people all the time, like, I cannot recommend enough. If you're like, oh, we'll do these projects before we sell, do it now Mm -hmm. so that you get to enjoy them before you sell the house. So if you're like, oh, we'll update this bathroom or we'll update this kitchen before we sell it, update it today. Do it now. Why do it for somebody else? Mm -hmm. And we get, it's so easy to justify doing it later because you're like, oh, it's for money. Right. But you could update it now touch it up when you go to sell it but you should your home should be a place that you put effort into making the environment something that's easier to enjoy because we spend so much time at home especially now so many people are working remotely Mm -hmm. coming out of COVID Uh uh-huh and so for me another area that I've started putting effort into is my yard so Mm -hmm. we're on project make the yard feel good because the yard was just crappy, not not fully grass. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I told my grandmother, I'm going to do the yard. Like, it needs to feel a lot more. Like, I actually really like plants. I like working in the dirt. I like taking care of plants. So, I was like, it's time to do the yard. And my grandmother's like a professional shopper. <laughs> so, <laughs> she's been helping find the plants. I just like give her my card and send her away. Um, but she's found a lot of good stuff like plant wise at Walmart that was a lot cheaper than it would have been if wherever I had, like I'd probably go to Lowe's or Strangers or something yeah. and spend a lot of money. And sometimes you have to do that to get the plants that you want. Right. Like I think my, I want to say my banana trees came from Strangers. Yeah, probably. I think, and something came from Costco. Yeah, something from Costco, and I don't remember what what thing it was. But she got a dogwood tree from Walmart. She's gotten a bunch of plants from Walmart for my yard. Yeah, I would never have went there. No, I wouldn't have thought of Walmart either. But she's gotten a bunch of stuff at good prices from Walmart. And I would say your outdoor area is something like that too, where it makes sense to put a little effort. Like, put a plant in a pot 
out where you sit. And like watching you do that is like something I used to not feel like I cared about. I mean, obviously, like I want it to look good, but yeah, the, the outdoor space wasn't as important to me as the indoor. And it's like watching you and like watching the yard transform. It's like, okay, like maybe it's time maybe for it's me time. to start like putting. Yeah. So I'm like, basically, what I'm saying is like your environment also can help you inspire you a little inspire bit. You, yeah. Now that I'm digging in yeah. the dirt. Uh, uh, Tori's not gonna take it. I'm not a yeah. She's not a mm -mm. a dirt hair, <laughs> dirt kind of girl. Yeah, no. I was outside in my pajamas this morning. Yeah, there's no way. Planting plants. <laughs> Tori, Tori knows that won't ever be part of her job description. We do a that's lot right. of random stuff around here, but I do know that that's just not her. <laughs> and that's on boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, one of her few boundaries is going to be not digging in the dirt. <laughs> yeah. So we're not going to try and make her do that. Yeah, that's just not for me. I don't even want to pot a plant. <laughs> you know? This is ridiculous. <laughs> I find, I think it's really therapeutic yeah, for like me mm -hmm, to work in the yard. So know what dig. things, yeah, know what you're. To each their own. Uh-huh. Know so what you're. Maybe you that is for you. you. It's maybe it's not. Yeah, like cooking's not for me either. <laughs> <laughs> like yes to all of this, except I'm not gonna cook. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not, not gonna, gonna cook, and I'm dirt. not planning anything. <laughs> That's not <laughs> happening. I would say another one area that is a huge thing for me is my drinks. So I am definitely someone who enjoys tea and coffee a lot. Mm -hmm every single day i have to have it and i have to have it hot doesn't matter if it's july yeah you are i like a hot tea or a hot coffee and that and i do like to romanticize that so if i can get a quiet minute in the morning which is not always guaranteed around yeah. here and sit with my tea or a coffee oh and just you just like take in the peace of that moment mm -hmm. or like have a paper book in your hand oh it's so nice. So in the morning for me, it's like tea or coffee is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And enjoying that and like enjoying the ritual of making it. Because I've had people before be like, oh, you could just put these caffeine drops in your water. And I'm like, that's the worst thing I can possibly imagine. Yeah. First of yeah. all, it's way too too much of a confirmation that I have a caffeine addiction, which I know that I have. Right. But also, I like the ritual of making coffee or making tea in the yeah, morning. Yeah, I enjoy that too. I do it here. And then I it's don't, <laughs> at my house. At no, my house. She's running behind. But I, like, I, I do that, like, even getting ready. Like, I want a podcast now. I started that, mm -hmm. and it's like, like, even if I'm, even if I'm running late, or even if the morning's like chaos or I have to like listen to it again once I'm in the car because I couldn't pay attention to it like it's something that I've like started doing that I enjoy like makes the morning, morning more enjoyable yeah. I like that which is kind mm -hmm. of the point of this podcast is right. to create an opportunity for people to do that so if you're putting your makeup on or you're cleaning at the end of the mm -hmm. day like that's something if my kids will actually go to bed at night which is a new possibility. <laughs> this hasn't been- We're like getting a little closer. <laughs> yeah, we're getting a little closer. If that happens, then I do like to clean up for the same mm -hmm. reason you said like it feels good. Right. Mm -hmm. So like if you clean up at the end of the day, we're getting ready in the morning or while you're cooking or whatever, mm -hmm. having a good podcast to listen to that makes you feel like you can enjoy the moment even more yeah or if you get to listen to a podcast while you're cleaning like you could put some earphones in and mm -hmm. um earbuds their headphones are earbuds yeah. gosh that just shows my 90s <laughs> i feel like i still call them headphones so you're it's because you're an old lady <laughs> i am an old lady. <laughs> but that's another thing like when i go out of town or like yeah like we're about to leave and we're gonna go out of town like i my house has to be straightened up because when i come in mm -hmm. even though like you've got your suitcase and all of your stuff like you're gonna mess it up as soon as you get home the second you get home it's but coming it's into good. a house that's like yours and it's put together mm -hmm. like it feels good no it feels and it feels really good, good leaving it put together like and then coming home to it i would say another way to romanticize things is candles mm -hmm. now 
No, she feels it. Candles are way. not good for the air in your home. Okay, they are, they are polluting your air. One hundred percent. Tori's like totally not on board. She's I'm like, not. I don't I'm sorry. Care. Like that is my yeah anthropology candle. I, is just <laughs> so I stopped. Like when I had Kyla, I stopped using so many candles because I was like, ooh, definitely this is polluting the air. Mm -hmm. But now I have so many in my fireplace. Yeah. So I don't feel so bad about what that's doing because it's in the fireplace. And then I have some. There are certain things that you can burn, like burning oils or rubbing alcohol or whatever it is that does not pollute your air so much. And I have those over at the table. So there are ways to, to have little pieces of fire in your yeah. life that are not polluting the air at your table, if, especially if you have kids. And then I do have one real candle in my bathroom. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And that is so if I'm taking a bath by myself or if I'm taking a relaxing shower, I can't do this if I'm taking a real shower because I need to see what I'm doing with the razor. But if I'm taking a relaxing shower or bath, I'll light the candle and turn the lights mm -hmm. off. That's Yeah, oh. that was the, this is something that Daryl picks on me about. Like if I take a shower at night, I'll like have the light in the bedroom on and then like open my bathroom door and like only not turn so the lights on light. Light, so it's a soft light and it's like so it's the before same. you get into bed it's like no i completely understand that and that's what i'm doing with the yeah, candle exactly it's like certain lighting yeah. i'm a i'm definitely picky about my lighting which yeah, i guess goes I back to the same tori gets it uh -huh. like i would get so at the our pre my previous house had these can lights put in and, and everybody loves can lights and they are great if you need to see what you're doing right. but in the morning I really like natural light or lamps mm -hmm. Tori gets it yeah Daryl and I really fight about it about too. the lights like, the, like he so we have like the can lights all throughout our house and yes it is bright and you can see but we don't have to use them all the time I get so in this house, yeah. I had like, yeah. I was renovating the whole house. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to put can lights yeah. in here, which is the good resale thing to do would be to put the can lights right. in. But for me, I was like, no, because when I am in here and someone walks in and they flip the can lights on, I become irrationally yeah. angry on the inside. Like I'm picky about the light um, bulbs that I use. Yeah, like, they can't, they can't uh -huh. be too like yeah. stark white probably or yeah. too bright. Yeah, I'm or too yellow. <laughs> they have to be the right <laughs> yes. shade. I mean, but I, but it makes a difference, and I would like challenge you to pay attention to your lighting because it might affect your mood. Right, you or like know. turning on lamps. Like get when, some lamps. When it starts getting dark out, like that oh. really can like yeah, make that, it feel good. So lamps, when you have a, a light fixture overhead, that light is like right raining down on top mm -hmm. of you whereas lamps are an indirect light it's a lot softer softer and like less intrusive or having light fixtures that are not so harsh like the two i have in here that i do turn on that are overhead lights only each of them only has one light bulb in it it's not a white light and they've got this i don't even know how to describe it but it's like this roping around mm -hmm. it so they're very soft they're not intrusive it's almost like if it's really dark you have to turn on all the lamps and everything yeah. in here it's yeah. it's my, it might not be light enough <laughs> but I prefer it yeah and I'm almost never gonna turn there's a fan in here with a light and I'm almost never gonna turn that on mm -hmm. because it's just so it's too it's, much yeah it is harsh yeah so I would say lighting is another way mm -hmm. to romanticize your space or, or like my commute like this is a good my commute like since it's been beautiful this week mm -hmm. like rolling or putting the windows down oh yes or the sunroof like like that kind of turning your music up mm -hmm. or like that kind of thing like even you can do that with your commute to work before like, I had kids that would ride in my car if I'm in my car by myself even if it's like a little chilly out I will turn the heat on and roll the windows down mm -hmm. and then in my house like right now I have the door open and the window open it's a little hot it's in the 80s mm -hmm. but I I would rather pay more for air conditioning and get to have the fresh air come in than to have all that closed. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes that's, so you might not be in a position to do this, but I think if you are in a position to be like, you know what, I'm gonna spend a tiny bit more on electricity and have my gas fireplace going or have the windows open 
which if you don't have kids, you don't need to be spending more on electricity. You just leave the windows open. For me, I need to have the AC going on upstairs all the time because if it's not a certain temperature, the kids won't sleep. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a delicate thing. <laughs> the children sleep and it's the most important thing mm -hmm. for my sanity. So that's definitely something. And I would say, so I've got my tea, my coffee in the morning, but then like drinks in the afternoon, like we're having a glass of wine now. I'm all about a good glass of wine or like cutting a lemon up for your water. Yeah, taking the time to like cut one off mm -hmm. and, yeah. and have that. Because we drink, we, we should be drinking liquid all day. Mm -hmm. I don't know, we shouldn't. Wine, I don't <laughs> think they would say you should be right. drinking it all day, <laughs> but we're going to drink liquid all day. So like, making it good, or I'll take the time, this is a more recent thing, because I've realized before I got pregnant that I really enjoy a good cocktail, and now I've started taking the time more often to make one. Yeah. So I might put, like, I've got seltzers, I've got vodka, I've got some different juices or cherries, and I'll put, like, fruit in it, and doing something like that it's like usually you might only have a cocktail that looks cute if you pay for one there's something else that you do that i don't feel like you even realize that you do that a lot of people do not it's like eating on a like your plates like not using a paper plate to like oh, eat on yeah i don't even think about that yeah sorry i just like no so that's you were point. saying that i was like that's something else that you do i like, have a yes, set of really cute plates the time to wash them and you know but that's something that I've like taken from you and I'm like I don't we don't do it every night but if it's like a Friday afternoon and like we're actually we're not gonna go out to eat or something like I'm like okay let's use our like plates I like, like cute tonight cute plates yeah. yeah oh I like that but you did that every meal you don't use no. paper plates no or... not for me yeah that's probably something I got from my dad now my dad's a spoiled diva that's really <laughs> what his is about he well, he's like i'm not eating out of plastic um yeah. but i think that he probably instilled a lot in me of, of like romanticizing your meals mm -hmm. that you're totally right like now if i have like a ton of people over and everybody's eating right. on a paper plate then obviously i'm not going to pull out a real plate for myself but every single meal i'm going to pull out my cute plate and my cute bowl or whatever it is like stuff like that like you it's little things that like you can do in your life to mm -hmm. make it feel good and like you have a couple extra dishes at the end of the day yeah that's I mean, fine yeah, you have an extra plate to it's wash. better for the earth also right you shouldn't yeah be, that's true don't use don't do that mm -hmm. don't use your paper plates every day unless you have six children i don't. hope daryl hears this daryl <laughs> listen daryl <laughs> listen to this one <laughs> Use your plates <laughs> and your dishwasher because I know you have one. Yeah. <laughs> so just use your dishwasher. No, that's a good point. I don't even think about that. And that's something a lot of people will just buy paper plates because they're like, it's easier. It's yeah, but it doesn't easy. feel nice. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel good. It's not nice to eat on a paper plate. It's not good for the earth to do that every day. And it's just, it's the, the tiniest bit of more work, but mm -hmm. it's definitely better. I would say making smoothies, since yeah. we're still on the kitchen thing. Yeah. I love to make a smoothie. I'm terrible at getting enough produce in my body, I feel like. I do try to eat, oh, that's another thing, try to eat one salad every day. Yeah. Like, if it gets to the end of the day and I haven't had a salad, I'll make a little salad with dinner. Mm -hmm. Mostly because it's full of fiber and your digestive system really likes that. So if you have problems with your number two movements in the bathroom, <laughs> try eating one salad every day the dark leafy greens are going to help you more than the iceberg lettuce right but just but try it if, if icebergs all you're going to do then, then start do that <laughs> start with the iceberg but a, a salad a day will change your life first of all i have a very healthy system <laughs> But you tell people that I, I'm very proud. I am very proud of my digestion. So I'm like, I do not have IBS, and I'm very proud of that. That is funny. Unless I'm pregnant, and then all bets are off. That's, that's <laughs> different. That doesn't count. That's a different demon. Yeah, that's you can't you can't help that. That's just a problem that can't be solved. But I would say a salad a day. But that and smoothies are a great way to get because. The reality is, is fruit has just as much 
you know, vitamins, minerals, whatever, as vegetables do, and they're delicious. But like, how much fruit are you really gonna put in your mouth, chew up, and swallow? Right. Every day. I mean, every, every day. day. Whereas with a smoothie, I literally put a bunch, I buy bags of frozen fruit, you just put the frozen fruit in, a little bit of honey, a little bit of water, maybe some ice cubes, blend it up. Delicious smoothie mm -hmm. every is. time. I love a good smoothie. And that's another thing you can drink and it's got water in it. Right. And it's really good it's for really you. It's really good for you. And then you could do like, you can put honey in it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like that's like helping you with your allergies if you're doing like mm -hmm. a local yeah, source. Honey's honey. a way to sweeten things yeah. that's not and bad it's not, for you. Yeah, exactly. It's not terrible. So I'm all about that. So that's another way. The dishes. I wouldn't have thought of that. All, oh, I like to drink out of glass. Glassware. Yeah. yeah. I really prefer it. And I'm kind of sad right now because a lot of my glasses are broken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they died. Breaking a lot around here. <laughs> There's been a lot of broken glasses recently. Yeah. So I'm going to need yeah. more glasses. But I ordered these little things because yeah. I was like, this would be fun to drink out of. So I and you're like that with your mugs, like in the yes, with your coffee. I like a good mug yeah. and or a good glass. I'm mm -hmm. all about that. Let's see, what else? We, we talked about music, like putting, you, you said you mentioned music. Mm -hmm. Music is a great, even if you don't feel like listening to like pop music or something that might be a little more obnoxious, I like to listen to instrumental covers of pop music. So it's like familiar, but it's a little more relaxing. Right. And there's something else that you've told me that like I do, like if I'm like in like a, like a funky mood or like not like awake as much as I need to be for like the event that I'm going to, or like for us, it's like a listing appointment or meeting a new client, like playing something that like you really like a lot mm -hmm. or like that's upbeat that like, Oh, hundred like, percent. You can influence your own mood like with it, music. I mean, it has changed my life since you said that. Like, so I, glad. I really do do that now. Like, it's something that like it makes a huge. It difference. does, and it's such an easy like. You just don't even think about something like that, or no. like turning your music up and playing your favorite song, or like pop music or some yeah something, something really that's gonna upbeat. hype you up when like, you're going to something that's important, or if you're feeling like, a little nervous, or if you need to perform really well. Yeah, or, or that was a thing for me in the beginning. It was like. Like I was like nervous, like mm -hmm. making sure that I was looking the part and doing right and you know that and it's like something, playing something that was familiar, mm -hmm. like calm me down and then like once the music's off, you're there, like you gotta show up, right. you gotta do the thing. So it and takes you're that. into it in uh -huh. that mood. Exactly. Oh, that's all, yeah. I've used that for years and years. I'm so mm -hmm. glad you've been doing yeah, that. No, it's, yeah, it's it really does help. Like, almost every day. Fantastic. But, but yeah, music can really change it for you. I would say the way things smell, that doesn't apply to me. I lost my sense yeah. of smell in 2020. At the end of 2020, I got COVID. I have not had a sense of smell since. Mm -hmm. It's been years. Help. But that used yeah. to be, <laughs> help me. <laughs> um, but that used to be a thing. Mm -hmm. The way yeah. things smell. But I'm very much an essential oils person because mm -hmm. I don't Cause she's want toxic crap in the air. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm a hippie. But I will say one thing that I will put, so I still have oil diffusers in my house uh -huh. and I'll put um, peppermint essential oils because even though I can't really smell it, sometimes if it's strong enough, my nose will pick up that there is a smell and that it might be pleasant. And also peppermint, you can feel it, which you don't even yes. realize it too yeah. much. But it's like spicy, it's <laughs> spicy. Yeah. So instead of really smelling it, I'll diffuse uh -huh. it because I can feel it. Like I'll lay in bed and be like, like yeah, I no, can't I smell it, but I know headache. it's there. Like I'll put it here and like mm -hmm. right here for a headache. Peppermint. Oh, it's fantastic. So the way things smell, like. So I stopped using dryer sheets because of my love for planet Earth. And I use dryer balls and I put this, it's not rose essential oil because actual rose essential oil is so expensive. It's probably really hard. Though. Yes, because I mean, how many roses, how <laughs> many rose buds do you have to crush to get that oil? I don't know. I don't like that business. <laughs> Apparently it's a lot, but this is, um, what is the company? Uh, it starts with an R. 
Dang it. No. That revive. Revive. So like, revive art. has this. If you if you Google revive, it has an essential oil that's like, it's named after the rose stuff. But it says like it's not pure rose. It's like rose mixed with other stuff. But it smells like rose. That's mm -hmm. my that's my dupe. As yeah, people are and you put them on the dryer balls. I put it on my dryer balls, and it leaves this very faint, sweet floral scent. Mm -hmm. um, and you're like, but you just said you didn't have a sense of smell. This is something I did pre-COVID, and so I know that I like this. Even though I can't smell it, I know it's there. Yeah. So, like, finding... And for my sister, that doesn't really do it for her. That's not the scent that she wants on her sheet. Like, I love it on bed sheets and stuff, mm -hmm. or I used to when I could smell so she does, I think she does like lavender and eucalyptus yeah, together or I'm something. I'm very bougie with my laundry detergent and my dryer balls. Tutorials now. spend like I'm money. Like, it's <laughs> ridiculous. But that's something that like I romanticize. Mm -hmm. Like it makes me, like I, it makes me like eager to wash my clothes now. Cause I'm like, oh. Cause it'll smell good. And it's, yes. And then like when you're folding your clothes and it's, you smell it or your clothes are warm, like it's such a chore that like everybody hates it hate folding your clothes but if they smell good it's like, more pleasant it is i like that yeah. that's a good point i would say one that i've been trying to convince myself of mm -hmm. is like doing my makeup and my hair yeah that's that's, I'm, that's where i'm like tori with the dirt i'm like yeah <laughs> what a chore <laughs> we're like cooking food i'm like but do we have to yeah. like that's i i'm i'm very much like that's my that like you're like you never no, like she always has I, makeup on. I always have makeup it doesn't matter if I'm going to get gas probably yeah. like, like we can I, look like crap all day like and I can like and my hair can be a mess and like my outfit could be super comfy but I'm gonna have makeup on it's just I don't know it's just something I just, makes me feel good and put together a little bit more I really I used to be a person who loved makeup so much and then I guess I had kids and I was like this is a chore. I do like like if I have the time and the freedom I like getting ready but I typically don't have that much time which I will say I do think I've kind of perfected having a makeup routine where it feels good mm -hmm. it feels like I have a full face but it takes no time. Mm -hmm. It's very quick. Yeah because that's how mine is. It's literally I wake up in the morning and throw it on. It's like it's just quick done. and easy. Mm -hmm. But it's a routine and it's something that makes you feel right good. like like even if you're not going anywhere for the day it'd be a good idea to change your outfit which is something I did when I was quarantining during COVID mm -hmm. is like even though I was changing from comfy clothes to comfy clothes right. I would change them in the morning I'll tell you something that mom does that I find hilarious but this is she romanticizes it is matching like she's like everything like her undies with her clothes like no I do that too really? like my bra even if you cannot see it will but be that's it bothers she, me if it's like, not matching she, my she says she feels more put together you feel prettier like, if your mm -hmm. underclothes look good with like your everything outfit. matches I and like her socks I'm, like, on board I'm not Kim. like that like I'm mixed matching no socks. I'm on board Kim <laughs> like if I have like a brown type outfit uh -huh. I want like a nude bra I will all you will almost never catch me wearing a black bra with like browns on my outfit or vice really? versa like yeah. if i have a black outfit i need a black I'm not bra as good at that oh it makes such a difference she's, yeah she says that it makes her feel i put together. totally agree i'd say my weakness is like doing my hair that's where i yeah hence why i have a braid today right now in a second because yeah. it's such a yeah pain i feel that way about my hair too so i'll like throw it on top of my head with a bunch of bobby pins and people think that i did it but mm -hmm. That's my hack. Well. That's my hack. <laughs> I like literally put it on top of my head and put Bobby. Yeah, without in. like you don't use like a hair tie. No, it's I literally like pins. throw it up just and I just like stick Bobby pins yeah, in it. It it's looks like I did it. And it stays. It, it does. <laughs> but I just can't stand and I almost can't stand having it down since I had kids because it's like in the way and it's like mm -hmm. a sensory thing. Like it's taking up my capacity to feel which amanda said somebody had told her recently i think it was like maybe it was a therapist or something of hers was like if you're feeling overwhelmed put your hair up and i'm like that's me every day every day really? yes because this is like touching you oh. it's like sensory input uh -huh. and so if you're feeling overwhelmed that's something that you put your hair up it takes that away so that's like one sensory i input feel that, that way away. you know trying jeans on <laughs> <laughs> You need to put your hair up. <laughs> no, just like it's like too overload. It's too much. Like, 
Okay, yes. So like, like, or like putting your clothes on right after the shower. Like I hate, I hate when I'm like somewhere at like somebody else's house or something. You can't just like get ready like naked. <laughs> you have to like put clothes on. Okay, Kyla. She's I, very no, sensitive like, about I can't not stand being fully that. dry. Ah, uh, yes. Like having to like put clothes on your wet body and like yes you dry off okay but you're not dry dry like you can't get yourself <laughs> like super super dry and you're like your hair soaking in the foggy wet bathroom in the foggy yes and you like can't breathe because oh, if you're like me dirty. you have it as hot as it possibly can go <laughs> but the second that shower's over the second that has to leave like <laughs> get get it out of here yeah but that's something that I can't stand. That's funny. See, mine is definitely my hair. Like, yeah. when it's down, it's usually bothering me. Mm -hmm. I've, like, now trained myself to not be able to handle it. And I think it's important, like, if you can, if it's practical, to do your hair and have it look good because you'll feel better. Mm -hmm. But it's not always practical. And another thing that comes to mind, too, is, like, um, like your sleep, like having a white noise or doing like the oh, brain sound. Oh, hundred percent. That is white noise machines. I have like seven oh, of them. Yeah, I've got like three. We've got a lot. We got a lot going on. White noise machines, night. having the right temperature, mm -hmm. maybe having a fan on. Mm -hmm. Oh, that stuff matters. Yeah. Your sheets you matter. Sleep better. Like turn the TV off. Don't don't mm -hmm. have a TV and like. And if you're somebody, like, this is a great, like, if you're somebody, because I know a lot of people that sleep with the TV on, don't that's do such that. a great transition to that. Mm -hmm. If you need noise, stop doing that. Like, do a white noise mm -hmm. or do a rain sound or. Oh, that's a good point. Your bedtime routine. Mm -hmm. I started recently. I'm very upset that I can't do Botox because they won't do it for <laughs> you when you're pregnant or breastfeeding. So now it's been a very long time and. I need it. Um, <laughs> so I like, I realized I had this thing that's like a, it zaps your skin. I don't even know what it's called. My mom had bought it for me. Okay. And it's like this electricity thing. Is it thing. like the dermaplant? And it's not dermaplant. I don't know. No, it's like a yeah. electricity thing. I really don't know what it is, but my mom had bought it for uh -huh. me. And I was like, oh my gosh, I never use that. Because you tend to get these tools that so you're like, I could use this on my face. And then you tuck it away because it's mm -hmm. kind of cumbersome. And I was like, no, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to put it in the drawer. And like every other day, it's going to be part of my routine where I actually pull it out and I use it. And so like I'm taking care of my face in a, a bigger way. And I think doing more and more of that, especially the older that we get, mm -hmm. is very important. Moisturizing properly. Having your nails done. Yeah. Oh, I, but I, I think I have like an OCD problem. I don't think it's even, yeah, yours is it's beyond normal romanticizing. Like I can't, if they chip or crack or break at all, I have to, they all have to come off. Like mm -hmm. I need them all off and they have to all be redone. I have to, so I've been doing my own nails cause I don't have time to go to the nail salon mm -hmm. and I'm pretty pleased so far with the dip kits. We'll see, we'll see how it pans yeah. out. But I am, I have, I have like OCD earrings or another thing I have to wear that's one thing I'm like Tori with yeah, the mascara mm -hmm. it's for me it's earrings like yeah, I can look like crap for sure but earrings I mean, I give me power have, like full on makeup but mascara is coming yeah you're it's a mascara going on. <laughs> I don't feel that I can't do if I do mascara every day which someone tell me why this is if I do mascara every day my eyes will feel so irritated even when it's new mascara even when it's high end mascara I cannot but do it every day mine's just because they're really blonde like I've got really long lashes, but they're blonde and I look so sick. You I feel like you wear. need, yeah. but it doesn't irritate your eyes to do it every day. Oh, mine gets so irritated. And I used to, it used to be a problem because when I was in my early twenties, I would do makeup every single day because and I like, needed to be like a real professional. And then my eyes would be so irritated. I would be like rubbing hydrocortisone cream on my eyelids. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to wrap this up. Okay. <laughs> okay, that was fun. In our queue. <laughs> yeah, the baby is waking, which means we are done here. But let us know what ways you might romanticize your days or nights um, or what you think we missed. Uh, and then um, and follow us on Instagram to see more of our nonsense. Like Tori and I, a lot of times we'll post pictures of, you know, what we're doing, what our right. day looks yeah. like. Um, sure. And would love to like hear feedback or see what you're doing with yeah. your day. Um, mine is what is mine? Katarina Real Estate Broker. Yeah, and mine's totally a Tory thing. 
That's cute. <laughs> of course it's cute. Yeah. <laughs> Romanticize your Instagram. Right. Um, and don't forget to leave us a review uh, if you're watching or listening. And we appreciate you uh, taking a part in a curated life podcast. Thanks. Bye.